Hey everyone, uh, thank you very much for joining me on today's video. We're going to be looking at the usual uh, charts. I'm going to go through the various applications that we're going to be looking at. So obviously, first of all, we're going to be looking at how fantastically silver is currently doing in relation to gold. Uh, we're also going to be looking at um, gold itself, uh, platinum, palladium, of course, and we're also going to be looking at crypto. So I've got, I've got four cryptos we're going to be taking a look at. You can see they're up here, Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, and Litecoin. And then I've got uh, four articles, the usual four articles that we'll be going through. So I'm going to go through them with you as well. Just note one thing I've added, a, uh, there's a tip jar in the description. If you feel free that I've done a good job in regards to going through everything with you, you're more than welcome to send me some crypto. So my uh, accounts are there. This is entirely up to yourselves, but it's there anyway. I'm not going to force anyone to do it. So it is there. Um, feel free right um we're also going to look at the coin market cap and we're going to be looking at the cryptocurrencies in general now first of all um from the video we when we finished on friday i stated that more than likely we were going to be seeing a pullback in silver so i expected um friday to close out at about the late teens which um is pretty much exactly what happened we finished on about 16 19 on friday and then we opened this morning i just want to say hello to a couple of people we've got some um, sheffield stephen heath hey buddy how are you doing it's good to see you we've got uh graham stacker as well he's just saying hello silver Lime and all and a uh, silver granny wow that's an that's an interesting one how you doing good to see you thanks very much for joining us here today we've got five listening so there's another two people out there so guys thanks very much for listening in it's always great to have um have everyone here we've got nick uh, nick molness says cheers from canada <laughs> awesome man right we're gonna be let's get stuck into it so we what we're looking at here is i've been sort of dissecting the charts over the last uh, pretty much the weekend so as you'll see in the other ones um i'll, uh, I'll be showing uh, ascending wedges um descending wedges and so on so obviously we've had our breakout here silver silver's breakout we had predominantly a selling day on friday however the there has been a major comeback in regards to the silver price. This is fantastic because if you look at the way gold is performing at the minute, gold is basically flat. It's down, oh, sorry, it's up actually. It's up almost a dollar. That's 0 0.007, if you can call it that, or 0 0.6. When you look at silver and you look at what silver's performing, it's, it's gone up 1.12%. That means it has essentially... It's almost about 10 times, um, out, it's outperformed gold by almost 10 times just for today um, in regards to the price. So it's um, it, in percentages. So I find that very interesting because this, is, this isn't, the, uh, this isn't the, the only day it's actually done that. So I find that in particularly very interesting, but it looks like we are, uh, there is some sort of silver recovery on its way. Um, we can see here in regards to our, our higher highs, and our lower lows, with the exception of Friday, when we had a pretty much consistent selling across all precious metals. Um, Silver Streak, hey, hey, Silver Streak, how are you doing, buddy? Hey, I hope um, I hope you're well there. Uh, Stephen, Stephen, he says corn's not a happy bunny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, yeah, so we are getting through this. There's our resistance level. We're currently approaching that resistance. 1650 is the is technically the, the big resistance level for silver to get through. So we're currently at $16.38. Um, so we're going to keep an eye on that. Hopefully we're going to see it slowly start constantly going up. Um, there's our range. The lowest was 1617. The day's range and up to 1642 was our high. Um, in our technical analysis here, it's in the buy zone, which is great. Right, we're going to look at the hourly. Let's see how things are broken down in regards to the hourly. Right, this is pretty much where we ended up on Friday, I believe, somewhere around here. Yeah, that one there. And then we've just gone straight. Well, we're in a ascending wedge. So let's just choose our wedges. So what we're doing here is we are going from low to low. There it is there, and then we've got our highs. So we can either work it from here, otherwise what we can do is we can create this sort of format here. So 
so it's touching the highs i'll touch in there you can obviously also do something like this sorry and then we're going to see if there'll be some movement before this wedge ends here we should see some consistent movement so it's um it'll either go up or down but we're going to keep an eye on that anyway we'll see we'll see how things how things work out so good for silver hope everyone had a good weekend that's good to see you man silver streak just saying hello to everyone that's so cool silver is up again whoop whoop that's Stephen Heath. <laughs> yeah so um it's definitely in an ascending zone so we are in positive territory in, in its direction that it's going obviously major resistance there at 16 16 dollars and 50 cents so we're going to keep an eye on that um it'd be great to see us um stay in the 40s for the day be mid 40s would be great and then hopefully we can assault the the 1650 mark tomorrow and hopefully break through that and start moving into some, un, into some uncharted territory that we haven't seen for a while um so that's silver if we look at gold another thing was that would make for some very interesting reading okay gold and silver ratio is busy loading up so i'm going to carry on here so this is the gold chart now still looking very good don't get me wrong nice upward momentum uh, if we choose our, uh, choose our low here and there's our low parameter there we're still on a nice upward tra uh, trajectory and then we've got our high over here There we go. So again, very nice. It's that nice ascending wedge. Obviously, with some consolidation around here, but we're well, more than likely we should start seeing some movements um, in gold. Probably by the hopefully over the next couple of days, um, as things start to build up in regards to the interest rate cut. Um, so hopefully, it moves and in, in, will move in that direction. But we're definitely going to keep an eye on it. Um, Silver Streak says buffering. Got to refresh. Okay, cool. Everything's fine on my side here. Silver Junkie's here. Hey, man, how are you doing? I did something bad, said Silver Junkie. <laughs> what did you do? <laughs> what did you do, buddy? Uh, Stephen e says, if anybody wants to buy any cheap gold, I've heard corn's got a lot for sale. <laughs> <laughs> I sold my silver. That is Silver Junkie. You didn't sell on the low side, man, did you? Hey, did, when did you sell it? You're supposed to sell high and you buy low. You don't sell low. Right, let's look at, sorry, before we close off the gold, let's look at the hourly. Right, that's gold on the hourly. Very interesting look. If you look at the daily, it's totally different. But if we have a look here, we've got a um, interesting. It might have a head and shoulders forming here. This is very interesting. Um, head and shoulders tends to be a uh, bearish signal. So again, it depends on what is happening over here. Um. Yeah, generally not a good sign if a head and shoulders uh, is confirmed because the more than likely but whenever you see a head and shoulders in in trading it's generally a bearish signal and that tends to be followed it tends to be followed by a sell-off um so hopefully that is not the case and maybe that's why as well is this the activity for gold is very quiet indeed so it's going to remove that off however again this is quite extended out so more than likely not a head and shoulders format but it depends if we were to drop here that would certainly give you that head and shoulders um kind of look obviously not head and shoulders the shampoo precious metals updates says hey silver line 71 net 79 and in the chat <laughs> let's have a look we've um silver junk says love me some corn 
Lahal Cobb. John RMS. Man, how you doing, John? Sorry, I didn't see you there, man. Sorry. Apologies. Sorry, I was too busy chatting away there, man. I hope things uh are things well. I'll drop you an email later on as well, just in regards to that letter. Um it's been a fairly warm day here in Ireland. Anyway, if you look at the hourly, but look, we're still we're sort of consolidating out currently at the minute. So goal a bit undecided if you look at the hourly. Um, so more than likely it's just waiting for a decision that's going to be made. If you look at where it's going to be um, it's trading as maximum 1430 to a low of not really much. It's about a $10 range currently uh, between 1430 and 1420. That's where it's going to be sitting at. So, um, but hopefully there'll be some uh, positive catalyst in the market that'll give it some direction and hopefully continue up. But on the moments, just trading sideways. Let's look at platinum. Platinum as well. Silver just looks fantastic in regards to the way it's it's broken down. Uh, so let's have a look again at the silver chart. So you've still got this this uh, this ascending wedge. So it's not like it's trading sideways like gold is. Where you've got this sort of flat movement across here, so you've got that, and it's this slow build up again, which you don't see in gold. You're seeing it just sideways tra you know, trading, and then you look at platinum, and platinum kind of looks um, also doing some sideways movement. Let's see, we got a low there of eight hundred and forty-three dollars per ounce. Platinum closer to the eight fifty marks, so eight forty-nine. But still currently five dollars up, so fair play, and it went up as high as six. Uh, sorry, eight hundred and fifty-two. Um, so it, there's a very tight range. It's about seven dollar range again in regards to platinum. So platinum might be taking cues from gold in regards to the direction of precious metals, but we'll uh, we'll soon see. But it's there's uh, there's definitely the pattern between this one here and silver. If we have a look at the two. So you've got that nice uptrend movement down and then straight back up. If you look at platinum, you got that upward trend movement straight down and then sort of sideways. So that kind of looks like gold. That kind of looks like silver. That kind of looks like gold at the minute. And platinum's doing its own thing at the minute. So uh, that's stacks and stuff. Hey, stacks and stuff. How are you doing? There's British Metals update. It's a public ninja. <laughs> Stacks of stuff. EPNS Stephen Heath. Hey there. Tom McStacker. Provident Metals have done low premium. 120th and 10th ounce Canadian gold. Well, that sounds great. John Ramesh, speaking of trading, I deposited £12 again and bought into Ethereum. Just cashed out. <laughs> Jeez, John. <laughs> uh, you've clearly got a knack for this sort of stuff, man. So you spent 12 So you basically tripled your investments. Good job. Precious Metals update saying um, hey to stacks and stuff. Right, let's take a look at Palladium. Now, Palladium, since it reached its high, it's been on a downtrend of note. However, it looks like it might have recovered some. So we're in this sort of zone here at the minute. This is let's have a look, Palladium on, on the daily. So there we go. Now, essentially, probably about a, a week back, I've noticed that that we were sort of curving out. And I said, is there going to be a pullback in regards to what direction we're going into? And if you have a look at it, this, the pullback is, is definitely happening in regards. So we've done that sort of manoeuvre now. Um, however, what we do now is, are we going to see momentum slowly build up again so that we can tackle that high, break that $16, uh, $1,600 um, resistance? Have to wait and see. But... Um, it's in line with its 30-day EMA average. So if we have a look back here, let's take a look, see if we're even predominantly under and then pulled up. So we might see ourselves under and then pull up again. So what, what, what we might be seeing here in regards to palladium is um, downtrend followed by an uptrend, which might take us above the, um, the resistance key level here. Um, so very interesting in regards to the way Palladium is working. Palladium priced at $1,526 um, an ounce. It's about $20 up, which is 1.38%. Uh, 
uh, which is close to what um in fact it might be outperforming silver yeah there you go silver up 19 cents to one to one percent okay before we get into any crypto let's do some let's check out so what we got here okay so before we get into that one let's look at this one here this is gold prices trade flat ahead of central bank's decision this is a article posted today investing.com so it says investing.com gold prices traded flat on monday as the federal reserve and the european central bank entered blackout periods ahead of its key policy decisions which markets um, expect to point to further easing gold futures for august delivery on comex division of the new york mercantile exchange were little were, were little changed up just five uh, five cents i'm going to say five percent uh, the Fed and the ECB have begun their retrospective periods of avoiding public speaking <laughs> and interviews ahead of the monetary policy decision, leaving markets without further input on policy makers. Um, outlook for movement for interest rates or stimulus. John Reed, chief market strategist at the World Gold Council, said last week and uh, the commitments of traders reported um, reports showed that a net speculative long gold positions remain elevated. So obviously the net positions for gold long wise have gone up um, to pretty substantial levels and was essentially unchanged on the week. Pointing to the Fed policy meeting on July 30th, 31st, Reid said that the gold, uh, that gold may mark time a little ahead of that. Gold may mark time a little ahead of that. Um, just ahead of the Fed's quiet period, Boston Fed President Eric Rosengren uh, said after Friday's market close that he saw no reason for widely anticipated quarter point cut at the upcoming meeting. Well, okay, so he's obviously saying there's no re reason for a widely anticipated quarter point cut. So he, he's saying there's probably no need for it. It'd be interesting to see how precious metals react if there's no interest rate uh, cut. Rosenberg insisted the US economy has much more uh, solid position than that of uh, the Eurozone or Japan with central banks are widely expected to pursue policy easing. I don't see, um, I, I don't want to ease if the US economy is doing perfectly well without easing, he said on an interview with CNBC. Uh, while markets did uh, reduce bets of a full 50%, sorry, 50 basis point cut at the end of the month, this continued to fully price in a quarter price reduction. Uh, beyond just the Fed, investing.com senior commodity analyst, Barani uh, Krishnan said that the central banks worldwide would be taking an increasingly dovish stance on monetary policy to the benefit of non-yielding gold. Central banks is widely expected to, to, to give signs of further easing this week, with market odds for a cut having uh, even surpassed 50% on Friday. Smaller central banks from countries such as South Korea or South Africa already took action in that direction on Thursday. Uh, the outlook for lower interest rates on the global level has spread across the fixed income market, resulting in $13 trillion worth of bonds with negative yields. Um, negative yields tend to be yields less than gold when they refer to negative yields. So $13 trillion worth of bonds with negative yields, increasing the appeal of gold. I'm going to go into in regards to what the profit, uh, what is called the percentage adjustments in regards to the precious metals, because I've already gone through that. Let's take a look at this one here. Just going to check in with you guys. Uh, let's have a look. Right, so Silver Stanger's dropped in. That's awesome. Silver Stanger, welcome. Um, John RMS giving the thumbs up and there. Hey, how are you doing? John RMS says, love it. He's loving his trading. <laughs> Thanks for the heads up, Tom. That's Graham Stacker, Tom. Um, there's Tom Stacker talking about the Provident Metals as some low premium gold. So definitely worth a look at that. Um, right, so we've got 10, 10 what? Oh, listening, 10 watching, listening. Guys, thanks thanks again. Then we're going to be moving on to the next one. This is a part one, so more than I will be expecting a part two. Right. What could the next gold rally look like? Gold Fibonacci price uh, ap um, amplitude weekly chart. You may remember that when we were calling for gold to rally from twelve hundred dollars, 
to just above 1300 earlier this year we warned that once this moves completed a pause and pullback below 1300 would set a momentum base um, near april 21st that would become the launch pad for a bigger move to the upside now that we've seen this setup complete almost exactly as predicted uh, months in advance we are waiting for the price to breach the fibonacci price um amplitude arc that is greatly uh, acting as resistance for gold uh, once this level is broken we believe gold will rally to levels near or above the 1560 dollar level in an attempt to set up another momentum base some uh, somewhere between 1560 and 1640 um, so that's sixteen hundred and forty dollars and fifteen hundred and sixty dollars respectively this price leaves um, This price level represents a key price zone where multiple price reflection points align and where larger Fibonacci price aptitude arc exists It is very likely that price uh, that price will run into resistance near this zone Although it may become a very brief resistance Right there we go. So what we have here is we've got a charts that's where we are at the minutes price resistance once we're through that target sixteen hundred and forty dollars an ounce let's assume that gold could could target various upside le uh, price levels in the near future and that gold may attempt to reach levels just below two thousand dollars before the end of the year we've broken our research um, into price segments that will help us understand and break down gold price advancement levels for future reference We've selected the 1650, 1750, 1850, and 1950 price levels uh, for our research. Gold silver ratio chart uh, below highlights the, inc the incredible rotation we've recently witnessed as silver exploded higher last week. Gold followed uh, this move higher roughly 24 hours later. The ratio price between gold and silver was at historic highs near 93 just a few days ago, currently is 88.1. Um, after silver rallied to help close the price gap between the two metals as you can see from this chart historical normal price levels are much closer to the 45 to 65 range what happens when this gold silver ratio value becomes extended is that price holds more value than silver and gold holds more value than silver silver is a precious metal that is often overlooked because gold is the primary focus of metal traders and generally whenever you ask anybody in regards to who's trading if they're do, doing commodities they'll say gold they won't necessarily say silver um however that might change in the near future silver is a precious metal that is not uh, that is often overlooked because gold is the primary focus for metal traders yet when panic hits the global stock markets and gold begins to move dramatically higher silver becomes an incredible opportunity as traders pile into silver expecting it to close the price ratio gap quickly how big is the price disparity between silver and gold how much more will silver potentially rally if gold hits certain key upside price levels i think what they should be asking is um if silver continues to rally where they're going to find gold <laughs> in the near future because if i look at the chart and we'll the, the way silver is moving it's moving in, in a very positive direction you should um have a look at my article the best metal to own for 2019 and beyond here that's obviously not mine that is this uh, this article um i compare gold silver platinum and palladium let's find out and explore some really incredible opportunities <laughs> kind of sounds like something i would say wow that is by chris vermulen at fx empire right let's see silver approaching that 1650 level so it's going to check and see how is that full push medals full push medals how you doing man like seven hey limey in the chat let's see we've got um everyone saying hello which is fantastic please remember to hit that like button whilst you're on please i like it john thank you Press metals update, silver line is 79. I think we don't, um, if we don't get a rate cut, then the markets will throw a tantrum. Absolutely. I totally agree. <laughs> and maybe that's why um, gold is slightly more cautious um, in regards to it. However, you know, silver's been overlooked for, for years. So, you know, yes, we probably will see some sort of pullback. Um, it's probably going to be really quick um, in regards to what silver is. So it'll be interesting to see what sort of reversal if we, um if we if we see it um what it's going to look like and how much of a drop we're going to expect
because the uncertainties in the market, silver would be hit harder. Yeah, I, I do agree with that. Just in regards to the, the, the price action we had on Friday, when it reached 16, just under 1660, it pulled back to 1617. So it practically gave up about 40 cents worth of gains. Dutch Creek Cabinet says, hey, Limey and gang. It's good to see you there, Dutch uh, uh, Creek Cabin. Thanks very much for, for dropping in. I think we will get a cut, although at least 25 basis point. And I totally agree. At least some sort of cut would uh, put the markets on a right on the right footing. So I surely hope, even if it's 25 basis points, um, it'll be pretty cool. Right. Let's go and keep an eye on silver currently at the minute in this ascending wedge. Hopefully we are going to be seeing some form of breakout here. Preferably before then, or if we're just going to consolidate slowly up. I'm going to keep an eye on that one. Right. Just going to check and see if there's any more news here. Gold flat. Just bear with me now that I've finished those articles. They're kind of being okay. Let's see what we have that we can find on the gold market. Oh, there was a nice article in regards to um, crypto and silver. So just give me one sec um, that I found on the weekend. And I wanted to show it to you guys. Um, silver rally may be fueled by the concerns about Bitcoin status as a safe haven. Where is the future? Let's click on that one. That's by News BTC. So there was another one there that had the... Um, Okay, this is the article here we're going to take a look at. This was Bitcoin and silver. Silver's rally may be fueled by concerns about Bitcoin status as a safe haven investment. This was posted 22 hours ago, apparently, but this says two minutes. Right, let's see. There we go, 22 hours. Bitcoin and the entire cryptocurrency market have incurred a severe uh, bout of volatility over the the past several weeks and months, which has primarily been in favor of the cryptocurrency bulls. Lately, silver has been inc incurring some positive price action, and one anal analyst believes that this has largely been driven by investors increasingly viewing Bitcoin as being too volatile to be an effective safe haven asset. Um, speaking of which, sorry, I'm gonna just pause because I think it said something about safe haven, Bitcoin and silver. a new safe haven or something like that. Damn, I really, it was such a, it was a really awesome, uh, this, I know it said something about safe haven on it, but okay, I'll, I'll come back anyway. Let's check this out. Hey, blended blended whiskey. Hey, blended whiskey. How you doing, man? It's good to see you, Mister Doughboy three five six is here as well. Awesome. He's busy doing uh, Mister Doughboy three five six. There's some kind of one uh, k challenge coming up. I saw it on um, someone else's one of someone else's sites, another channel's site. So be sure to check him out. Stacks and stuff is here as well. DB Stupid is here. Good morning, folks. Uh, hold on, Paul. Hold on, Paul. I need more. That's full push metals, hoping for lower lower lows. Um, Precious metals is probably at work. Uh, she's in a meeting. Where is health, babe? Oh, yeah, probably. Um, Precious metals up to says, most of the time I'm working during Lamy streams, except I have Mondays off. So that way I'm able to be here. Oh, that, that's fantastic. Thanks, buddy. Uh, right. So what we have here is we've got silver price surges as Bitcoin faces strong selling pressure. Right at the time of writing, Bitcoin is trading nearly 2% at its current level of 10,400. It's obviously lower than that right now, which is down significantly from its 24 hour high of over 11,000, which is set uh, yesterday after cryptocurrencies sharply moved upwards uh, before a incurring a massive influx of selling pressure. In contrast, silver has been consistently skyrocketing 
for the past several weeks and is currently trading at 16.19. That was the close on Friday, which is up significantly from its current lows of $14.30 per ounce that was set in early June. Although the type of price movement seen seems nominal when compared to those uh, seen within the crypto markets, it's important to note that this price surge is quite significant for a safe haven asset like silver. Gold has been facing growing buying pressure as of late and is currently trading at $1,425 per ounce, up from its one month low of $1,350. Could silver's price surge be the result of BTC's decline? Um, the question is asked. Importantly, one analyst believes that Bitcoin's recent volatility has done severe damage to its image and being a digital safe haven at, uh, investment and the outflow of capital from BTC may be entering commodities like silver and gold. Uh, I don't know. What do you guys think? I don't think so, to be honest. Um, yeah, I'm not so sure about that, but OK, let's let's keep going. Um, Jim. Lurio, the managing director of TJM Institutional Services, recently discussed this possibility while speaking to CNBC, saying, I think one of the reasons that the silver's rallied uh, like it is, or has, or in past tense, is uh, because uh, Bitcoin's kind of been taken off the list of safe havens with its recent volatility. So something had to replace it. I, don't know, I think that's still a very bold statement. But OK, let's keep going. Despite this, Equity Armour Investments, uh, Brian uh, Stutland explained to CNBC that he prefers both gold and Bitcoin to silver while looking at the long-term price action. I'd short silver and even throw in a long gold and play long short on it. Um, I, I still like gold better um, in the longer term um, or even Bitcoin after a big pullback here, he said. As Bitcoin's uh, volatile price action continues to unfold, and analysts gain a greater understanding of where it is heading next. It is highly likely that the state of and status of its recent bull run were growing increasingly clear. There was another article though. I'm gonna try and see if I can find it. But um Health Babe, there you go. Cognitive says I disagree with that thought that money is flying from BTC. <laughs> I know what you mean, man. I thought the exact same thing. I was like, what? Like <laughs> like someone's like someone's gonna like literally you know because i to me I, it just didn't seem plausible um yeah but anyway thanks for sharing that sentiment there coin collector uh blender whiskey says thank you it's all good beam with you being with your brother oh there you go oh thanks blender whiskey sorry i hope that was me how you doing <laughs> sorry no, i think it was stacks and stuff but i'm sure uh deep down you're glad to be here as well um Great group of people um, we got up in here. Yeah, jeez, wow, we're up to 18. This is fantastic. Up to 18 people, that's great. I'm going to keep that going. Thanks, guys. Uh, and well, SS, please check the description for any information as well. Um, I have uh, recently activated, or let's just say I put a tip jar there, so if you feel I have done enough, um, if you want to, it's there. So I'm only going to mention it a couple of times, but it's there if you want. Um, we're up to 19 so far. Graham Stagger says, Health Babe, there you are. We were just wondering where you were. Um, Health Babe just saying hello to everyone. And likewise, uh, Conglis says, John RMS, it is better to try your luck with 50 quid rather than 10 quid. Yeah, the higher you go, the more the more risk you take there, coin, coin collector. Conglis says, I just bought a whole load of antique sterling silver items. Wow, that's cool. Stacks and Stuff says, let's smash that like button. Uh, I might make some videos on them. Yeah, that'll be awesome, Coin Collector. Definitely make them. I can understand. I'm very wary of investing too much at a gamble. Um, Health Babe says, have not had any chance to look into any market. Wow, okay. Well, that's what I'm for, Health Babe. <laughs> uh, John Armour says, I think the cryptocurrency is a big risk, saying that I monitor it and I'm happy to try my luck. 10 to 50 quid at a time. Lovely. But I think Coin Collector is right there in regards to your minimum. I think on 10 quid, you'd have to see significant movements in regards to it. But I mean, fair play, you seem to be doing well. Um, 17 watching, only 12 likes. Well, don't forget to hit the like button. Right, I'm going to try and see if I can locate that article again, which I found on the weekend. So, Bitcoin and Silver, New Safe Haven. Let's see if we can find it. 
uh, of silver. Silver prices surge as Bitcoin faces strong selling pressure. Damn, okay, maybe that was the article then. Money maybe fueled by concerns about Bitcoin. I don't know. Uh, Bitcoin and let's say Bitcoin and silver and see what comes up. Silver versus Bitcoin. Silver loses limelight despite a significant market. Let's go. Cryptopolitan. We're definitely going to check that out. Post halving Bitcoin to hit. Wow, look at that. That sounds interesting. Post halving. Don't forget, um, Bitcoin's halving is next year. They reckon, or well, someone's got a prediction here that Bitcoin's going to reach $100,000 in 2020. Wow. Do you think we should check that one out? I don't think I'll put it to the one side for now. Right, let's check that article on silver. And then we'll have a look at the crypto market. Right, so silver versus Bitcoin. This might have been it. Silver loses limelight despite a magnificent market performance. Obviously, you can see a big gold bar and a big BS Bitcoin next to it. I don't think, to be honest, silver and Bitcoin, not really hardly the competitors. <laughs> but maybe, I suppose, from a price action perspective that we're seeing currently at the minute and um, a percentage increase, not looking too bad. But, you know, let's take a look through. Precious metals, um, silver is at its finest. Uh, sorry, is at its finest best this week. Okay, that doesn't. So I'm going to try and read this again. Precious metal, precious metal silver is at its finest, <laughs> finest best this week. Okay, that still doesn't make sense. In spite of the glorious price run and hitting record highs since 2016, investors speculate over silver versus Bitcoin market value as Bitcoin continues to steal the show. Um, 22nd of July. So that is dated today. Silver has had its best price um, in the precious metals market since 2016. However, traders still feel that Bitcoin is second to none. Obviously, it's silver's had its best price week, as I was going to say. And, uh, as far as I know, the high, it's not the highest it's had so far. Um, CNBC published a report that claims that silver is about to lose its luster as gold and Bitcoin scale new highs in the market. On July 18, silver ended its day run at, uh, at the market by hitting a record high. Subsequently, its rival precious metal gold, too, hit an all-time high and scaled a six-year peak following a steady rise throughout the year. Naturally, it has sparked the most talked about debate in the history of investments. Who will bag the ultimate throne for the most desirable store of value asset? Is it the underdog? Silver. The metal that stood the test of time. Gold. Or one of, of or one that has shattered all records. Bitcoin. Is Bitcoin the reason behind silver's dramatic finish in the markets last week? Okay, so again, I'm going to go over this because we've already mentioned it in regards to that one fella. Bitcoin is the ultimate investment uh, asset, as, uh, asset Scotland, which he's obviously mentioned that as well. So looks like they're taking a bit of this and a bit of that. They've mixed it in. Um, let's have a look here. So Brian uh, Stutton, a regular CNBC contributor, places his winning bet on Bitcoin despite all odds. Regardless of the Bitcoin market fluctuations and silver's new accomplishments, um, Stutton affirms he would still place his money on gold as a long-term investment and make make Bitcoin uh, call the shots. <laughs> uh, Stutland further went to comment that Bitcoin's losing its grip um, at the market can be owed to the Republican and Democratic reps slamming Facebook's Libra last week. You know, this is one thing I just I, I don't get. You know, Bitcoin's been around since 2008. Do they honestly think? That this one thing, because obviously now that it's in the news, they all think that's that's what's affecting currently Bitcoin at the minute. And, you know, I say maybe a small portion of it might be due to that. But I very much doubt that the entire volume of Bitcoin, the reason why it's had its fall is because of Facebook's Libra uh, last week. I just I very much doubt that. And it's uncertainty is hovering around the digital currencies in general. Uh, that said, he sum, uh, surmises that if the economic situation in the US, Japan or Europe continues to plummet and the interest rates remain below 2%, people will look for a better yielding investment. And its investment is Bitcoin. There you go. So even, even he's confirmed that it's Bitcoin. All right, just going to go through the chat. I'm going to just go back and just double check everything here. So we have... Um, Health Babe says, pretty much I spent my energy to fight idiocy for half the day. I'm exhausted. <laughs> uh, 
I've not had a chance to look at the market. No, we had a look at that already. Eight grams of 22 karat gold. Um, I hope everyone in the UK has entered the Royal Mint's giveaway today. It is a whole sovereign. Wow, man, that's great. To our mess, I'm making a lot of time at the moment. I'm making a lot at the time on Ethereum. Wow. <laughs> John, you're doing well, man. If you're making money on Ethereum, fair, uh, fair play to you. I'll uh, watch for the dip and put in, and there you go. So John's got it. He's buying the dip and selling on the high. Just be careful shorting this market at the minute. Uh, we could be in for some interesting times. So we're going to take a look at, at the cryptocurrency charts in a sec. Coin Collector says, John RMS, have you been entering the Royal Mint scores every day this month? Letter Whiskey says, yes. Nice. Health Babe, silver to the moon. Uh, Health Babe wants everyone to buy silver so she can get out of silver. Um, Coin Collector says, I hope everyone in the UK has entered the Royal Mint giveaway. Sorry, I thought that was already there. Um, participants, um, just go on the Royal Mint's homepage. It's called the Summer Giveaway. Dutch Creek um, Cabin says, I haven't been buying silver. Just can't afford it right now. But I save all of my copper pennies for now, at least. There you go. Like the sound of that. Diversifying into uh, into copper for now. Coin Collector says, just notice you have put your B2C wallet addresses for tips in the description. <laughs> yes, I have indeed. I thought, well, um, I'd put them there. I wouldn't say everyone seems to do it, but a lot of channels that do put them there. So it's there in case anybody wants to. That's obviously not a... I'm not asking for a, for anything, but it's there anyway. I had someone asking me in regards to Super Chats the other day, and I was like, nah, I'm not monetized. Um, Silver Lamy 79, yes, please encourage everyone to buy silver. There you go. Keep Keep buying... <laughs> keep buying the lows <laughs> keep buying the lows guys and sell on the highs that's that's a, that's about all i'm gonna say um but yeah let's see if we can um see silver keep pumping right anyway so let's lose that one right it's now time to move into this one here we're gonna start looking at crypto right so we're gonna look at the charts let's check and see how silver is looking Oh, I like that green, green, green. I love those green candles. We've got some good green wicks too. Needs to keep moving. So, um, silver at 16.39, currently 1.23% up. Gold is currently at 14.28. It's just started moving now as well. It's a $1,428 an ounce, up $2.65. Uh, platinum at 8.50, currently up $6. Palladium, $1,526 an ounce, up $21.48. Right, let's take a look at Bitcoin, everyone. This has been driving me mad all weekend. I've been looking at various um, charts, angles, movements. Obviously, we had just had recently had a bit of a drop. And I was having a look at this interesting head and shoulders formation that came up here and i thought because generally with a head and shoulders formation which i've mentioned before there tends to be a sell-off after that obviously we've we're nearing this bottom uh, low trend line anyway and it just couldn't sustain it there wasn't enough volume so it fell through so we're on this next um ascending line the previous low was down here that was nine thousand three hundred and the next ones are up here. So it's pretty much touching those lines all the way through. And um, looks like we've got a bit of a red candle forming at the minute. Bitcoin currently priced at $10,300 per token. Let's look at the daily for Bitcoin. Try to get rid of that. There we go. Right, that is our daily uh, for Bitcoin. So currently, the last couple of days, it's had, uh, if you guys have been keeping an eye on the market, jeepers, what a weekend we had. It was just constant selling, selling, buying, selling, buying. And we were in an extremely tight range for Bitcoin the entire weekend. I'm actually surprised it held out as long as it did uh, before we broke through uh, today. But um, there it is. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how, how we do of the next few hours to determine the next level 
of movement that we're going to be looking at here. So let's go back into the, let's just have a look at the weekly chart in regards to how Bitcoin is currently looking. Still, still looking good on the weekly. Still an upward trend momentum, even though we are having, look at that, that was a whole week of just in the red. That was a whole week of just in the red. That was a whole week just in the red, the one that's just passed. Oh well, let's have a look at the monthly. That's our monthly chart. That's our high back in 2017. So that's where we are at the minute. We're there. It's just, it keeps like teasing, you know, when it goes up to these levels. If you look at the previous uh, previous month's high, it's just touching that and pulling back on a monthly, on the monthly. So 10,307. Well, let's go back into the hourly because that's where all the action is. Do you guys see a lower price from here onwards? What do you think? It's been in this tight range for quite some time, actually. It was uh, the 18th. We sort of had this huge spike up in volume, and then it's just been trading in that sort of zigzag mode. This was interesting. Um, has anyone bought? Has anyone bought into Bitcoin currently at these levels? I will make a video in the near future of my crypto strategy. I like your blend of whiskey. That's awesome, man. You got to do it. Health Babe says bye, bye, bye. Pump, pump, pump. Complex. This is great. Me. Great, great new John RMS just entered. There you go. DB Stupid says the reality is Bitcoin is pure speculation. Um, I, uh, I I do disagree with you there, uh, DB Stupid. There's a lot more um, institutions looking at buying Bitcoin as a store of value. So um, I I hear what this is. This is DB Stupid's comment. He says the reality is Bitcoin is pure speculation as are all other crypto. Any negative headwinds are what drives the price down. Any hype news drives it up. Otherwise, it's a unicorn spot. Wow, those are some pretty interesting words, but I totally disagree with you there, DB Stupid. Uh, why are institutions getting in? Why is, why is BACT coming into the uh, into the market now where they, want to, where they want to launch Bitcoin futures? Why are more institutions, why are there more exchanges now coming, on, coming online offering Bitcoin? Um, I, yeah, I don't disagree. I uh, disagree, but you know, you're, that is a interesting point, though, from your perspective. Health Babe, yes, please encourage everyone to buy silver. No, it's uh, leprechauns, apparently, that coin collector. You stupid says, Health Babe, don't forget, buy, 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 pump, 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 then dump, dump, dump. <laughs> get, get fresh coffee and repeat. Uh, the dump, dump, dump part will be executed when the target comes. Yeah. Deep stupid says the thing about Bitcoin is that the run from 20 bucks to 220k can be repeated without crashing back. Yeah, look again though, DB stupid. We the market back then was far different than what it is today. And you're welcome to do your research. I always say, do everyone do your research. Bitcoin market back then was there was a, a lot of speculation. There were not that many exchanges. There were not there was not that much interest and investment from institutions. We now have. A load of institutions. You've got a, a lot of exchanges. Well, I'm I'm talking about um, stock exchanges that want to put have crypto futures. So there's a lot of interest there now than there ever has been in regards to it. So again, it's you know yes, back then it was predominantly and there was a lot of speculation back then. Yes, but you can't compare today's market to back then. You just can't. Um, Health Babe says, um, I need to put and to have crypto debate in my live stream. <laughs> this Health Babe wanting a crypto debate. DB Stupid says, it's coming online because the markets are so mispriced. And DB Stupid, I again, I fully respect your answer there. But um, again, the, the, the banking institutions um, can also, they, they can smell the money in the space. I mean, if, 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 that's, if that's the case, then why are banks... And the institutions bringing out their own cryptocurrencies. Now you got JP Morgan Coin, which is their internal uh, cryptocurrency that's going to be used for for their own internal uh, transfers. Um, you've got XRP, which does international transfers in four seconds, and it's going to be used internationally. They've just signed with Bank of America. Actually, there's one of their. Uh, it's one of the articles which I'm gonna we're gonna go through in a sec. Um, you've got um, Grayscale uh, Bitcoin futures um, as well. There's there's just 
there's just so many institutions out there currently um, interested in this space um, that it's 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 not what it was the years um, as it was years before. Health Moop says, "I mean, uh, to put you and DB stupid to have a crypto debate." <laughs> <laughs> I I now doubt that people are going to get rich trading crypto. Well, I tell you what, uh, you would be very surprised. I mean, take a look at this. This is this is something I this is something I watch. Right, this is whale alerts. Now, this is handy when you want to avoid those massive dumps um, in in the in the crypto space. And what this does is this lets you know when you have transfers um, in the market. So take a look at this. Right, so we got a whale alert here. Four hours ago, someone who had 3,000 Bitcoin, which is valued at $32 million, transferred from an unknown wallet to an exchange there called Hobie. So obviously they, they transferred it from their wallet. This is something you can see. This is the transparency of the network. So you can see this transfer, right? And that's valued at $32 million. So, um, I mean, if you're saying that people out there aren't making money, I mean, we've got big figures here. Look at this, 395,000 EOS. Valued at one point six eight six million dollars, we've got seven hundred and ten Bitcoin here, valued at seven million four hundred US dollars, transferred from Coinbase to an unknown wallet. Um, I can keep going. Uh, one thousand four hundred and twenty-five Bitcoin, valued at fourteen point nine million uh, American dollars, transferred from an unknown bond wallet to an exchange. So obviously they were looking at selling that, and uh, you can correlate this through to the charts, and you can see exactly when you had those red candles and when you didn't. 5.5 million packs at the well, which is technically one to one with the US dollar. It's five and a half million dollars there. 498 Bitcoin was was transferred 19 hours ago, valued at 5.299 million. Um, we've got 4,598 Bitcoin valued at 49 million dollars transferred from an unknown wallet to an unknown wallet. Um, again, you've got 5,000 Bitcoin there 20 hours ago, valued at 52.9 million US dollars. Um, transferred from an unknown wallet. Um, obviously, they had a bit of an issue with their servers. Uh, there's another one there, 5,000 transferred from Bitstamp to an unknown wallet, which is probably that same one there that transferred back. Uh, so, again, you've got substantial amounts. There we go. We've got 10, 10 million XRP valued at 3.3 million. And these are big numbers. We're not, we're not talking chump change here, like $50 or $100. There are big people here moving this money around. 969 Bitcoin valued at $10.1 million. Um, Binance coin, BNB, 39500 at a value of $1.217 million. Transferred from an unknown wallet to Binance, which is the exchange. 500000 link valued at $1,300,000. Uh, US dollars. I can keep going. Uh, here's another one for 15,000 Ethereum valued at $3.3 million. So, again, it's uh, to say people aren't really making money in the space. I don't think so. <laughs> um, official invitation <laughs> says Health Babe. <laughs> uh, uh, to RMS. Just FYI, can everyone, um, anyone seen the news on the slot of gold caught in a package uh, thought to be gang related and money laundering? Wow, no ways. UK has grabbed it. Wow, that sounds interesting. Thanks there, John. There are people that came into crypto very early. There are true believers. Uh, they're holding billions in crypto. But again, you've, I mean, you've said there that, that hardly anyone, I mean, you said there, I have no, oh, I, I now doubt that people are going to get rich. You just said uh, you, you doubt anyone's going to going to get rich, but then you put a comment there saying uh, there are people that came into crypto very early that are true believers that are holding billions in crypto. They're getting rich, so people are getting rich. <laughs> Clearly, DB stupid. Um, John Ramess has posted a link there. Definitely worth a check. Uh, I look at the belief in crypto in the same way that people believe in Tesla. Either you see the dream or you don't. And, um, in the meantime, people are driving more electric cars. Still nowhere near. Yes, people might be driving more electric cars, but there's still a massive amount of combustion engine vehicles out there. So uh, it's going to take a very long time in regards to getting that mindset to electric. Um, <laughs> health babe. Hell yes, people are making money in crypto. Uh, that was health baby so that I will be very kind to both of you. Uh, I meant to say no doubt, 
Oh, sorry. Apologies, Deep. Well, I read your comment then, as 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 you stated. Um, sorry, thanks for the correction. <laughs> DB stupid. Crypto is making people richer than silver is. Hey, S and P, how are you doing? Yeah, I mean, I suppose if you look at the gains, the gains currently in the crypto market have out shown the gains in precious metals uh, by quite a long shot. Um, so it's very interesting to see that way. Uh, DB, I am making money. There you go. <laughs> There's uh, John RMS saying he's making money. How many went? So let's get. I'm going to start going through these posts here, right? S and and P says crypto electric charging stations coming coming too. Yeah, I mean apparently they're rolling out more more Bitcoin ATMs now than they than they ever have been. So you'd be able to go to an ATM and you'd be able to draw Bitcoin. Um, so they're going to be looking at rolling more of those out, which I find that's very interesting. Graham Stackers says, I'll never drive electric unless Uncle Sam makes me. <laughs> it's just a matter of time, man, before they push you into electric cars. There's John laughing. Right, here we go. So post-halving. So Bitcoin halving is next year. So if anyone doesn't know what halving means, it basically means that half the um, half the uh, half the block, if I remember correctly, half the supply will be uh, well the supply will be cut in half that's why they call it the bitcoin halving um so um it's going to make bitcoin scarcer um so it will be reduced by half next year so this is what it says here post halving um bitcoin to hit a hundred thousand in 2020 uh it's unlikely apparently the data shows <laughs> so obviously you've been getting a lot of guys out there they've been posting the videos up yeah bitcoin's gonna go up to 100 000, 50 grand all that kind of stuff but um apparently they've got some data that shows um it's um, it's not the case so let's get straight into it uh just gonna check bitcoin again there so ten thousand two hundred and fifty six. okay that's the pattern we're sitting in at the minute Let's check. I just want to see how we are tracking here. It's our descending wedge. That was confirmation there that we dropped down. So we're going to see, are we going to drop down again? What's this? 20, this will probably be in the early hours of tomorrow. Or if we're going to break back up. So that's the one I'm going to be keeping an eye on. And we're going to extend this here. So our lows. There we go. So that is the new block I am going to be looking at. I'm going to delete this one. Because that is the new block that we're going to be taking a look at. Right. Sorry. I diverse. Uh, let's have a look. Deep Stupid says, here is a nugget on crypto. It costs 8% minimum to buy crypto from an ATM. Uh, anybody that claims that is a good thing is is, is pumping. It shouldn't cost 8% to buy cr uh, currency. Well, um, uh, look at premiums on, on precious metals and gold. Do you honestly think that uh, premiums on, on precious metals are justified? Uh, the premium on cryptocurrency is far less than, than you buying precious metals, for sure, 100%. It's got some of the lowest premiums ever if you look at cryptocurrency. Whereas if you buy an ounce of gold, or sorry, if you buy an ounce of silver, you generally pay what thirty percent? Thirty percent of the of the value of the coin is is the action is is technically what they charge as a premium. Imagine charging charging thirty percent a premium um, to buy cryptocurrency. It would be a laughing stock. So cryptocurrency in general is cheap to buy. Um, s and says, I don't think Bitcoin will hit that high because before it goes to that, uh, to that, people would, would push into new cryptos and also into their coins like Litecoin. Yeah, that's another one we're going to look into as well. What is it again about halving? I don't understand. They're half. Sorry, I, I think you probably got that. They're halving the supply. So the supply gets halved. So we got Litecoin's halving is next month. So they literally cut the, uh, they cut the supply by half. Apparently that goes to the miners. Uh, we're going to take a look. Actually, I'll get that confirmed. So, what is it? 
Here we go. Litecoin halving is an event where the number of generated Litecoin rewards uh, rewards per block will be halved. Okay, so that's what they pay the miners, right? So that means that the amount uh, that is normally given to the miner that they mine per block will be cut in half. So Litecoin halving um, is the event where the number generated Litecoin rewards per block will be halved, divided by two. The total number of Litecoin mined by miners per block will re will reduce from 25 wow okay so obviously the amounts of um litecoin that can be mined is also reduced so the the blocks get reduced and uh, the incentive or the reward is also reduced in half um so there you go so i reckon that and we've got the we got the litecoin halving coming up and i'm sure that's going to make a difference because effectively you're 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 cutting supply um So did everyone get that? Like on halving is the event, or any halving really, is the number which is generated. Uh, rewards per block will be halved by uh, divided by two. Total number of crypt whatever cryptocurrency mined by miners per block will be reduced from 25 to 12.5. Um, there you go. So sounds interesting enough. Um, Deep Stupid says, okay, we've gone through that one. I think more likely I will... I will suck on a toe before Bitcoin hits a hundred thousand. I don't, I don't like these. <laughs> That's hilarious, man. Uh, John Aramis says I put in twelve pound because I get hit with a, a one pound forty in fees, then cash out. What uh, is one ninety nine? Uh, <laughs> hey, John. Cheers. Take care, man. Thanks for dropping in. No problem. Cheers, DB Stupid. Take care, buddy. It's good to have you, man. I, um, I always look forward to seeing you in the chat. s and is Donald Trump's coming out with his own cryptocurrency called Phonos, the fake news orange face. <laughs> Health babe, I see. That means the miners get half of the reward than they used to. Yes, exactly. But then also the block that they mine, so there's less to be mined as well. Um, so the reward is based on the amount that they can mine. Well, at least that's the way I perceive it. Certainly, it comes across that way. So if the if the if the block is reduced by half, then the reward to them is reduced by half. So that's Litecoin, which is going to be interesting. So I've got my bags. I've got my bags bags ready uh, for that one. Right. So let's have a look at this. So Bitcoin. Um, this is Bitcoin monetary policy that is practically set in stone due to consensus mechanisms that satoshi nakamoto implemented into his brainchild satoshi nakamoto was the founder or the the one behind the white paper of the peer-to-peer -peer system of bitcoin just in case those who don't know who satoshi nakamoto is while the halving may seem mundane uh, with it um being something that the mainstream media outlets can can easily gloss over bitcoin investors have, have clutched um to these events as precursors to bull rallies so the same as Litecoin's um, halving is next month. According, they see it as from an investor's uh, perspective, they see it as a precursor to bull rallies. Dropping you some hints. <laughs> Just look to the below chart as a long type of uh, uh, logarithmic chart of BTC's price history accumulates the halvings uh, marked by black lines. So there we go. We're going to take a look at this in a sec where the seamlessly kicked uh, off parabolic moves higher during the cryptocurrencies market saw a splurt and growth that can be defined by orders of magnitude. Okay, so let's zoom at this. We're going to take a look. We're going to see the halving points on this chart. Hopefully. Right, so that was the first, the first one. Rally. Second one. Rally. What do you think is going to happen on the third one? And it's coming next year. What is going to happen here? Could we be down here? We could be down here. Who knows? Then we're going to rally up. But that's a that's a nice parabolic move there. What am I getting that again? We could be. We could be at some good numbers there. I guess I have to wait and see on that one. Uh, ECB will be more aggressive in these coming years. He can, uh, European Central Bank. Uh, S&P says maybe the US will create crypto. 
Not babe, can you make a crypto? I will buy for sure. As a piece I think too many people are trying to make cryptos out of thin air. There should be a limit. Um, so is at the point that a pimp will have his hose except crypto. Um, pimp crypto is P R U S P Pimp R S. <laughs> <laughs> Health Babe says it also means that the group of developers change the algorithm to reduce the allocation of the block size will be reduced. In a sense, the block will will be shared with many others. Buy before the halving? I ain't saying nothing, but clearly, I mean, if you look at this chart here, and this is past results, whenever there has been a halving, there's always been a decent bull rise. What we do between here and here is based on your decision, and obviously the Make that decision based on your own research in regards to what is happening in regards to the market. But there should be a decent bull run after that. Um, that is for sure. Because what uh, what is different from these areas here and to where we are today? Well, the market's totally different as well. Um, you know, a lot of speculation back here. Now we've got a lot more exchanges, a lot more institutions. Now we're all looking at cryptocurrencies. You've got central banks looking at cryptocurrencies. There's a lot more institutions looking at cryptocurrency. So, you know, it's it'll be interesting to see what sort of move we can expect. All right, it says, um, due to the chart, uh, which effectively implies that the block reward reductions uh, are what helps the Bitcoin price appreciate, investors have been eagerly awaiting the next halving events slated to occur by mid-May 2020. So get your diaries out. May 2020 next year, that's when the Bitcoin halving is due. Uh, per a new study, though, all this hype may just be unfounded. Well, I mean, clearly they're saying it's unfounded, but looking at the chart here, does that look unfounded to you? Um, is that is that hype based on what we've seen in the past? This is actual results that we're seeing here. So, you know, I disagree with that statement. Um, Harbings, um, unlike, unlikely to boost BTC or LTC. What? <laughs> it seems crazy to believe, but research completed by Strix Leviathan, a Seattle-based crypto startup, and first spotted by the crypto slate um, indices that halvings may not have um, as much effect of on the price of Bitcoin based on assets as a hype as as the hype indicates. Now again, the way I've always thought of it, even if you go from traditional ways of doing money, if something has less supply, it's automatically worth more. That from that perspective, that's been around for years, hundreds of years, maybe even thousands of years. If there's a limited amount of supply, it's worth more. It, it fluctuates. Uh, the uh, analysis of data on 32 halvings across 24 cryptocurrencies. See, again, I, so what they're doing is they've got 32 halvings based on 24 cryptocurrencies. But well, what cryptocurrencies are we talking about here? Um, so he says, which include Bitcoin and Litecoin. So out of the 24 cryptocurrencies that they've looked at, right, they've only looked at Bitcoin. And those are the top ones, Bitcoin and Litecoin. So what about the other 22? Uh, I mean, it's hardly... It's hardly evident to compare Bitcoin and Litecoin to other to twenty two other cryptocurrencies out there. Does that make does that actually make sense to anybody? Um, uh, Health Babe says it also means that the group of developers changed the. Yeah, sorry, I just saw that one now. Um, Health Babe, it looks like hitting the plateau. <laughs> Silver Army, can you start drinking coffee or soda when you do your streams and make loud sucking sounds? <laughs> I'm in the office now, says DB. Um, I'll need to test my office computer on the Hangouts if you wanted me to be in the in the stream. Cool. I live 1,500 feet from my warehouse. Wow, that's cool. Literally just walking distance to work. Uh, I think Facebook should not be allowed to have a cryptocurrency since they can't be trusted. I totally agree with that statement. Uh, Facebook is a scam. <laughs> if you think about it, all they did was since they introduced Facebook, that they've just essentially used everyone's information to, for their own gain to a degree. I mean, that's clearly evident in regards to the information sharing that they've done. Um, that's an in interesting point, though, S&P. That is very interesting in regards to his point. Uh, S&P says, I think sh uh, Facebook should not be allowed to have a cryptocurrency since they can't be trusted for even keeping personal info safe. Facebook is a scam. Uh, Deep stupid. After Limey stream is over, we might be able to. We might be able. 
we might be able to have a short test. If you follow the guys that mock Raw Dog when he hates something, he usually goes up in value. <laughs> that is also very interesting. Um, if you haven't hit the like button, show Limey soul loving. <laughs> Thanks, S and B. Just so everyone knows, I'm doing. Um, I'm going to be offering IOUs for IOU intended. I O oh an I O U okay so I O U for fifteen dollars each for crypto wow that's some that's some bargain. Um, Health Babe says you guys want to experience being starter in any market, you can run simulations pretty quick, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, right, so let's have a look here. So we've got uh, the analysis of data of thirty-two halvings across twenty-four cryptocurrencies. It's only included two of the uh, of the of the big ones. Um, there is no clear evidence that crypto assets. That they see their emission uh, half outperform the broader market in in months leading up uh, and uh, up to and the following the reduction in the miners' earnings. Um, in fact, uh, strict researchers suggest that for Bitcoin in particular, halvings actually act as a negative catalyst leading up to an event um, which goes somewhat against the narrative put forth by many on crypto Twitter. Well, that's interesting because again, I look at this chart and what does it say? We had a dip and then it went up. We had a dip and then we went up. I don't know. Right. Strix attributes the hype uh, around these block rewards reductions events to limited sample sizes and historic data, coupled with the idea that fundamentally a reduction in Bitcoin and Litecoin issuance uh, should result in some form of a positive price action, barring the demand for cryptocurrency shrinks, that is. Bitcoin may still appreciate. So even after all he says that, he said, oh, you know, he's leaving the option there just in regards to his own article saying that, yeah, well, Bitcoin may still appreciate. Um, while there may not be material rallies before and after halvings, a model from the prominent cryptocurrency tactician suggests halvings events should have a long-term effect on prices. <laughs> good, good Lord. What a crazy article. Uh, so he's saying he basically has no, has no particular... Uh, in regards to the, the research they've done but then at the end it says uh, bitcoin may still appreciate so there's no material rallies before and after halvings a model from the prominent cryptocurrency tactician suggests the halvings actually do have some sort of effect long term wise right <laughs> i've had enough of that one right let's go back let's just check okay so 10282 we'll check out ethereum in a sec right all coins this is so altcoin is any is any coin except bitcoin that's what they refer to as a altcoin uh, i got to go everyone my life is calling for me for a walk um what's up with her wanting me to get healthy nothing wrong with that and i think you mean wife as opposed to life um take care buddy thanks s p for dropping in Uh, what what to do it? Want to do it? Apparently, Hell Babe says, uh, debt instruments any fiat. <laughs> says Hell Babe. <laughs> DB stupid. I think that crypto is possibly off ramp to escape deflationary uh, collapse. I just don't know what um, it looks like on the other side. DB stupid. Very good. Uh, sorry, uh, DB stupid. Very good point. It could be for short term. The Fed is very afraid of deflation as well. Right, all coins are set up for a hunt for Bitcoin. This is by Carlos Terenzi. Uh, this is Crypto News. It says, among the many altcoins, only Ethereum is yet to be crossed upwards. So I'm anxious to see that one start moving up. XRP moves on another ecosystem and will not pull the market. Libra may be positive, not uh, a danger to the market. Uh, right. It is the middle of summer in the northern hemisphere and high temperatures, warm seas and generate humid current uh, currents that rise and generate perilous storms. It seems that the cryptocurrency market is becoming unstable and it's uh, likely that in the coming days we'll see an explosive movement among the altcoins. In fact, that Ethereum is not in the same phase as Litecoin, Ethereum Cash or EOS concerning Bitcoin. That's also keeping all of this upside pressure under control. In uh, technical sections on the Ethereum Bitcoin pairs, I explain into detail this scenario. So obviously it does a comparison between instead of using the 
Bitcoin US dollar or the Ethereum US dollar. That's the comparings between Ethereum and Bitcoin to see about the appreciation or depreciation. Market is acutely aware of the Facebook project Libra, but I think it's not critical for the real crypto market. The dynamics of the crypto market are not going to change no matter how many problems Libra has with its uh, conception and implementation. Then he's got their ETH and daily charts, and we're not going to go into that. Because again, there's just a comparison between um, how things are going to be looking. So we're going to skip that one. This is fairly interesting news. This is Ripple Ripple rising. XRP at 4% after Bank of America mention and Bitso news. So Ripple XRP adds 4.3%. So I was not really sure what Ripple XRP is. Uh, XRP is a cryptocurrency um, that can be used for cross-border payments. And effectively, the company um, Ripple, that's essentially their main focus in the business is uh, cross-border payments um, to make them as transparent and mainly for banks. Um, Health Babe says we need to see silver t- to break and retain at $1,650. Hope it will take place in the next few weeks. In the next few weeks, I reckon it's going to be sooner than you think, to be honest, Health Babe. Sorry, the donkeys are out. <laughs> what is going on? Hmm. Right. Uh, the Mexican exchange Bitso has a license for Gibraltar Financial Services Commission. Bitso is the first exchange from Latin America to comply with the Gibraltar Financial Services Commission regulation while at um, at the citation of Ripple in a patent by the Bank of America is bullish for XRP. The time of writing, it is 4.3% from the last week's close. However, again, because we're in a not so cool market currently, in regards to it, I doubt this is going to have very much effect on the price, which we will take a look at. Ripple price analysis fundamentals, uh, the debate on whether or not Bitcoin is a tool for money laundering and funding terrorism is dominating headlines. Ripple is aiming to distance itself from such discourse. The financial technology company is offering a suite of products that intends to appeal directly to big name financial institutions. So banks make use of some of Ripple's financial um, solutions. However, it is becoming increasingly apparent that it might take years for Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse's vision to be actualized. Um, Ripple drives in the Middle East is, is bearing fruit. While well, Bank of America citing XRP in a recent patent, um, the Wall Street um, household name could end up using XRapid in the near future. Nothing is substantiated at the time of this writing. This is nonetheless mere mention of XRP and XRapid by extension um, should be huge for Ripple fans. Meanwhile, Bitso, a Ripple partner opening up uh, the US-Mexican corridor via XRapid, uh, has a dis- distributed ledger license from the Gibraltar Financial Services Commission. The license gives Bitso a leading uh, position as one of the most innovative financial service providers in LATAM and the world by becoming the first exchange platform in LATAM licensed and regulated by the GFSC. Right, just checking the chat quickly. Do- yep, the donkeys are in. The donkey agrees with silver above 17. <laughs> <laughs> precious metals update i'll be listening while uh, while grocery shopping love it that's so cool um thanks man precious metals update that is that's really awesome man db stupid okay i'll presume um health baby uh, got his email and then cleared us that's cool blend of whiskey Says uh, Jody Rhodes, anyone buying cannabis stocks in the UK? Apparently, that's from Jody Rhodes. <laughs> I didn't even know that's even possible. Um, thanks for being a loyal audience. Love it. DB Stuber says, I'm in the office, standing away from the monitor. Hopefully, I get notifications set up correctly. Man, also, there's another great um, uh, viewer of mine, DB Stupid, in, in, the, in the work office listening to my live stream. Um, right, so I'm not going to go into candlestick arrangements, so I'm going to leave that one. We're already being fueled by concerns with Bitcoin status, right? So that is pretty much the news. Let's go into Bitcoin status, right? Currently, right, ten thousand two hundred and ninety dollars currently per token, down three hundred. We have transactions listed over here. It's currently in a sell range, 
the low was 10,139 and the high was 10,688. Um, so if we have a look here, um, already said this and showed you, I've got sending wedge pattern in place here. So we're going to see if it is going to be heading lower or if we're going to break out from this perspective over here. So that is the key area for me. I'm going to be keeping an eye on this over here to see how this is going to pan out because we've got a high over here, a high there. So we've got our high line or high trend line set and there's our low over here. Right, let's look at Ethereum. Ethereum currently a very interesting one, it tends to follow Bitcoin from its direction. So if we have a look here, but Ethereum currently down to two hundred and fifteen dollars and seventy eight cents. Uh, one thing about Ethereum, though, when when markets do go up very rapidly, look at that. You can it can go from one sixty five to two hundred and eighty one. Right, that was May. That was within eight days. That was within eight days. Went from let's just say one seventy to two hundred and eighty. Almost went up one hundred and ten dollars in eight days. So things like that can happen. If you have a look here, that's $229, 360. And that was 26th of June. That was in 20 days, that was 17 days. Obviously, and that's where we are here. So, yeah, things can happen. We were at 343 and we're now at 215. So, yeah, things can happen. That's why it's always important to buy in the dips, sell on the high. Right, so let's take a look, a closer look at where we are here. This is the daily. Um, so again, a bit of a red, you know, the last three days, four days have been fairly red. So let's check, I'm gonna break this down and let's see what the hourly is like. Can you pull up the marijuana index? Never even heard of it. I'm not sure if you're messing around or, uh, or if that's an actual thing. Johnny Rhodes says right now, everyone seems to be waiting for Trump to do something silly. Interesting, I'd buy enough product. Jody, Jody Rhodes, I am waiting for him to boost the US dollar and crash the gold futures and cut next is apparently what health paid once. Uh, Jody Rhodes, well, at least I know who's on the other side. <laughs> right, let's have a look at this on the hourly. Okay, so there's our moving averages, far, uh, far higher. So we're actually oversold. Now, what happens when we're in an oversold market? If you have a look here, we were oversold, came straight back up. So what does that mean? We're probably going to have to get to about this point. So I want to see some sort of retracement happen here. That has to be at least back up to the 220 level. I think would be a decent level to aim for. Uh, but effectively, whenever we've been under our moving averages, we tend to, we don't last long in that area there. Uh, maybe uh, six, eight hours, and then we're back up sort of just drifting and then under it again and then back up again and then back down again same thing that goes here we were up we were down within the um moving average then we were up then we we're clear then we were down and then shot straight up so um i think we might have a retracement here and that might explain let's set our uh, descending wedge Very similar to Bitcoin. Look at that. Okay, and then we have our something like that in that sort of zone. That might look like something like that. So it's going to get tight. We're going to have to wait and see over here. When's that? 23rd. Okay, that's going to be tomorrow. So who knows? It might be the breakdown or break up earlier. So it could be in this area. 
I think uh, you guys in America will have a better chance of reading this than I will. I'm serious about the marijuana index. Okay, I'll take a look. <laughs> I thought you were just messing around. A small bottle of uh, Ap Ap Apidolex is over $3,000. Wow. <laughs> right, okay. So uh, Ethereum, $215.15. Let's look at the number three crypto. That's XRP now. Essentially, it went up and wow. Okay, so we are seeing... Some green, and there you go. It's pumping right now. Some good news in silver. We sort of just broke that 1640 level. Okay, XRP 31958. Currently one cent down. Yeah, it's pumping. Is there something I'm missing here? No, Bitcoin is still in the red. Litecoin, look at that. Litecoin's moving. Okay, so anyway, let's, let's just look here, right? So where are we with XRP? Well, we have our lows are low. Sorry, I'm going to, there's our highs. Let's keep an eye on it. Let's see if we can break out. There you go. It's going to look like something like that. Let's adjust this up. I should probably do it. Right, that is our channel. So we've got a, we're going to have to see if it's the, how descending this is, but it is a descending wedge, neither, none the, the less. So we've got the uh, XRP price, 30, it's just broke 32 cents. This is, this is one of them, bubble is bursting. Where are you based? You work odd times. Not sure, uh, Jody, are you asking me? You guys see my screen okay? Sorry, I'm just on my on my screen here. It doesn't look very clear. Can you all yeah, okay, so you can all see my screen okay. So on my screen it looks all kind of blurred. So if that's just the, maybe that's just the signal where I am. Right, okay, let's look at Litecoin now. Mm, look at that. We've had these like sort of green and then drop. There's our descending. That's our eyes. Look at that. That's perfect. descending went there are we going to break out we're going to know once we're in this sort of area over here we'll get a clearer picture but again we're oversold here litecoin is oversold and again if we look at the past whenever we're oversold we always pull up same there oversold pull up so are we just waiting for this to drift down and then catch up then break through but again we're going to be hovering around the sort of hundred dollar level uh, we need significant breakouts like these here we're going to keep an eye on those. Um, let's have a look. Um, screen is water based. Hmm, that's interesting. Looks like you've thrown water on your screen. Okay, that's interesting. So you can see that too, then. Okay, so I'll tell you, we're going to wrap this up in a sec.
just changing the screen here. Oh, I see it. I see those little patches on the right hand side here. Okay, it's going to go back. There you go. That's a little bit better. Right, okay, so let's go back to Bitcoin now. In fact, uh, let's have a look at the gold and silver ratio, 86.92. 86.92, everyone. The close uh, previous was 87.9, so we've actually gone down an ounce. That's fantastic. We're actually back, we went up as high as 93. We're now back to 86, just under 87 ounces of silver per one ounce of gold. Is anyone gonna think of cashing out some of their silver once it gets down to a let's say 50 to 1 level would you prepare to let go of five ounces uh, 50 ounces of silver the health wave says yes you are fine now okay cool i don't know what that was that was very interesting anyone expecting a little war with iran would be interesting on the markets it certainly would be um i think there's interesting pressure in regards to precious metals at the minute Graham Stanger says, I will be cashing out of 50 to 1. <laughs> Ozzy Elkins says, 50 to 1, yeah. He's got, he'll be wanting his uh, yep, yep, he'll be wanting his gold. Um, Ozzy Elkins is saying, yeah, that's better now. Perfect. Yeah, where do you guys think a acceptable level of exchange between silver and gold should be? Because obviously, if we're looking at a 50 to 1 ratio, let's say 50 ounces of silver, so an ounce of gold, then effectively, what sort of price it would be need? Twenty dollars, twenty dollars per. We're going to need twenty-five dollars, thirty dollars, probably around thirty, thirty dollars uh, an ounce of silver. I suspect to fifteen hundred um, dollars per ounce of gold. Elfie says I will swap the majority of them uh, to gold when it hits fifty to one. Well, there's going to be looks like there'll be an influx of. I think we're all going to have to. We're going to have to all hit this on one day. <laughs> Otherwise, a lot of people are going to lose out. There's going to be so much oversupply. So um, when this does happen, fifty to one, we're, going, we're all going to have a meeting on uh, on YouTube, and then we're all going to go on the same day. We've got to take our physical uh, down there to go and get exchanged for gold. So that way, none of us none, none of us are going to lose out. Uh, Graham says, I think 10 to 1 is great. <laughs> 10 to 1 is a great ratio, man. I don't even think it was ever 10 to 1. I think it was 15 and 20 to 1. Um, and then it went up to 35 to 1 at, at, at some point. Um, I really don't think um, and can't use the historical data as a reference. Yeah, true. True, I suppose. It's a different, um, it's a different time. Right, just two updates, everybody. Right, where do I see the price of Bitcoin? Well, it's head, you've got lower lows, which is not a good sign. Um, so we are in that area here. So we're very precarious, I suppose. But the next sort of eight hours will definitely confirm in regards to which way we're going. A lot of people are saying that Bitcoin's headed down lower. But again, you know, it's difficult to read how this market is. We're currently oversold, which means that we should expect some sort of adjustment up. Back up to the 10.4 level. We're currently at 10,260. Um, hopefully, a break at this level and a push back up will put us back into sort of a semi bullish level rather than a, a bearish level, which is a breakdown to this area here. But I think everyone is wanting a lower price for Bitcoin because probably because they want to get into Bitcoin. So um, it, it just it's difficult to read, but you know, charts don't lie. What we have here is we've got a descending um, wedge that we see here. So we are having a lower lows um, and lower highs. Generally a bearish sign. Okay, so that's Bitcoin. Let's look at Ethereum. Same thing, we got lower lows and lower highs. So again, also a bearish signal. So where are we going from here? Again, depends on the market too because all of a sudden all it takes is for one piece of news to come out like backed is in their testing phases for their bitcoin futures they're busy testing their software today so it's going to be uh, imminent when that is released when bitcoin opens up for business 
and what sort of effect that'll have on Bitcoin. So either we're just waiting and the, vol the, the problem here is the volume is very low um, in relation to what we're seeing here. So when volume is low, it's either going to go up to the high side, it's going to boost up or it's going to break down. But when volume is too low, then it tends to break down. So we could be in a lower low area. So where to from here? But we have support here. The 211 mark looks like we have some degree of support, but not much. But once we're below that, I think we're going to be in interesting territory. Um, we'll be closer to the $200 level, which is a uh, great buying opportunities for anyone looking to buy into crypto at that at, at that level. And a lot can be said in regards to Bitcoin. Uh, probably 9,800 after this, the 99 level. Uh, there it is, 10,000. 10, uh, there's a lot of selling over here. That's a scary thing. So we could end up getting down to this level again. 9391. And then bottom, 9000. I'll tell you what, when we get to down, down to 9000, I'll be buying. I'll be buying, <laughs> especially at these levels here. <laughs> um, XRP, we've already uh, had a look at there. However, they're having a bit of a rally i wouldn't say rally but uh the last few hours we've seen some green uh, which is interesting enough so we're seeing a reversal there uh litecoin as well as seeing a bit of green so um that is seeing some green too So in other words, it needs to break out of this area here to start some sort of trend up. So it needs to break out. So currently it's hard work because it's really literally started moving from the bottom side and up. So um, if it's able to break through here, we could see ourselves very stiff resistance there, 32.9. Uh, they Well, that could help. The 32.7 could boost it to higher highs. Well, sorry, in that segment there, up to 33 cents maybe. But there's also resistance in that area too, which could bring it down. So 33 cents, very tough resistance. Um, and we're going to have a look at Litecoin in a sec there. Right, sorry, just um, going to check with everyone here. We need to do a boxing up video instead. If it, uh, I really don't know, can't use the historic data as a reference. Um, Ozzy Alchemist says nine to one is natural ratio out of the ground, allegedly. Wow, okay, so every nine pieces of gold, uh, one piece of silver. Um, Precious metals updates, silver lamy 79, after 60 to one race or even 70 to one, uh, I'm converting it to gold. Wow. Well, so it's literally not that far from 70 to one then. Just need to keep going. Precious metals update says, yes, health babe, I don't plan on selling or converting all at once. I will sell or convert. Um, in on the way up and by when it goes on its way back down. That's one way to do it. I love it. Or buy on the uh, buy on the lows. I just convert them into trenches when it hits below sixty. Health babe will be watching and waiting. <laughs> the precious metals update. Indeed, I'm just waiting for just buy gold instead when the gold spot goes back down. There you go. So Health Babe's in the market for gold, but she's not buying at these prices. She wants lower lows. Uh, Blended Whiskey says, uh, let's say it's 50 to 1. There will be a lot of sellers, but would you buy? If you would not buy, who will? Someone will. Right. Okay. So, again, we've got the lower lows and higher highs currently. Sorry, lower lows and lower highs currently set up. So, again, we start in this descending wedge. So where do we see support? Well, so we are slowly moving up, which is very interesting. So we hit a low of 91 um, and it's slowly creeping back up again. It's like a sleeper. And then pow, it's gonna explode. Then you will hit 105 or something like that. I don't know. It's the way it always tends to do. You tend to get these, and then it goes straight up there, which is, what, 105? <laughs> Literally from 90, it went up $15. So we're all waiting for that. So, you know, in the short term, uh, in the short to near term, there is some buying action involved for those that are considering getting into crypto um, at these prices. I mean, $94 for Litecoin. I mean, it wasn't um, long ago when it was 140 So there's still movement there. We've got the Litecoin halving coming up next month. 
So again, this could these prices you may not see them again. Uh, but again, do your own research. Um, certainly, these are just my personal opinions. Um, there is a disclaimer in the description as well, so keep an eye on that. Right, everyone, let's check in on the precious metals and we'll finish up. Right, so there we go. That's silver, 1641. I'm expecting a little bit more movement, so it'll be great to get ourselves into this area here as we creep up. And hopefully we are going to do something special coming up. I'm going to see a nice little candle pump. But we're coming up to that 1650. We're 10 cents away from the 1650 resistance. And then we've pretty much got to continue on. We've got to power on through to 1660. But um, silver looking good. Um, it'd be nice to finish at about the mid 40s. We're currently 1641. That's what I'd like to see. Six to, at about the 1645s. And then we continue tomorrow. And then we're really going to rally and push on through for that. That's what I'm. That's what I'm certainly hoping for. Uh, let's look at gold quickly. So gal, gold. Be great to see some movement for gold. Um, hopefully we'll see some form of movement, but again, it's probably just waiting in the wings in regards to the announcement for now. So we might just see cons consolidation out at these levels um, as high as what 1430 and as low as 1420. Platinum is an interesting one as well at 1649. Again, doing the same as gold. Uh, palladium sort of doing its own thing. Right, so we're pretty much finished here, everyone. Um, if you want to have any questions at all, help babe. Help babe says, some will me, pump, pump, pump. <laughs> if it does not break the resistance in the coming few weeks, silver could go the other way. Uh, well, absolutely. What tends to happen is once you constantly try to hit resistance and you're trying to break through, eventually there is going to be a um, retrace. You might want to print your sucker 50 labels ahead. Yeah. <laughs> So true, I've learned my lesson with silver health, babe. Uh, let's say 50 to 1, there will be a lot of sellers. Uh, but would you buy if you uh, would not buy? Who will? I'll tell you, a 50 to 1 ratio. Hmm. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people there converting into gold. I mean, if you think about it, we've come back from a high there of nearly, what, 95? So all of a sudden, you're getting double the value in silver against gold. So it'll be a great time to pick up some gold. Even if you don't have to buy a full ounce, you can get a quarter ounce. Think of it that way. That's probably not a bad investment, those quarter ounces. All of a sudden, you're you know, trading in a portion of your silver and getting, so getting a few quarter ounces. Health babe says, sell, sell, sell. <laughs> Health babe, would you consider uh, oh, me? Would you consider to have crypto discussion with TV this coming Saturday for real? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about that. Um, Grab Stacker, yeah, see you guys. Thanks a lot, Graham Stacker. Take care. Have a good day. Got a video coming out tonight. So, oh, well, I'll, my notifications are set. So, looking forward to it. I was going to do some shout outs uh, for everyone here. So, let's check it out. We've got Blender Whiskey, Graham Stacker. We've got Health Babe, um, Precious Metals Updates, Aussie Alchemist, Jody Rhodes. Roads and that is DB Stupid. That's that, everyone. So there's 16 of you. Thank you very much for those listening. Um, I really appreciate you guys as usual. Um, thanks so much for watching. Um, I've also put a uh, link in the description for those that want to get some free crypto. There's a link there for Coinbase. You can go through register, and then you can then watch some videos and get some free crypto. The link is there if you want to follow it. Um, click on that. Um, you can then share it with your friends as well and hopefully they will also join in and you will get a slice as well um health Link says hope silver will get into the bubble territory and we can all take advantage of it absolutely i totally agree i want to see 1750 18 dollars um i reckon it's time for silver to shine Thanks, everyone. Really appreciate it. Um, thanks for adding in your comments in the chat. Thanks for liking the video as well. And, of course, if you're listening, you haven't subscribed yet, 
hit the subscribe button. You will be notified, obviously, and click the bell. So that you know, keep uh, keep contact. Generally, Monday to Friday, I do my live stream during the uh, day. We look at the market report. Um, I'll keep you guys updated. And um, it'd be interesting to see what silver is going to be priced tomorrow. Uh, but I'm certainly hoping for mid mid forty uh, mid forties, and then hopefully we're going to break through that sixteen fifty level. Hopefully over the next day or two. Thanks so very much, and um, thanks so much for for watching. And I'll see you all next time.